My name is Liz Goldsmith, and I'm really excited to introduce today's chapel speaker. She graduated from San Francisco State University with a degree in broadcast communication and has been a voice actress for the last 30 years. She starred in the Muppet Babies cartoon series, Darkwing Duck, and Totally Spies, as well as a number of other animated film series, films, commercials, and video games. She lives in Torrance, California with her husband Vinny and two of their five children. I grew up listening to her voice, and so did many of you. Not in a movie or TV show, but in a radio drama that's very close to my heart. Since 1987, she's been the voice of Connie Kendall on Focus on the Family's radio drama, <laughs> Adventures in Odyssey. <laughs> I first met her at an Adventures in Odyssey live show in Colorado a few years ago, and over the last month or two, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know the friendly, spontaneous, Connie-esque person behind the character. Please give a warm welcome to today's chapel speaker, Katie Lee. <laughs> Let me see if my mic's on. Yeah, all right, this works. Thank you. This is, uh, I'm so glad I wore waterproof mascara because you guys are, just, you have no idea what a blessing it is to look out and see all of you. And when I, hopefully when I share a little bit of my story, you'll know why it's so amazing that I'm able to talk to so many people. But at, when I come down, or right, can you come up here real quick? Hurry up. Yeah, you, Becca. This is Becca, and she's, no, up here, up here. <laughs> she's a, a member of the, of, whoa, oops, okay, come here. All right, no problem. She has a camera, and I just want you to take a picture so I can show my family. All right, because seriously, you know, I, 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 I'm going to remember this when I come home from work, and reaction isn't quite as enthusiastic as what you just gave me, okay? <laughs> All right, okay, so it's, I'm so happy to be here. Why do we learn to write essays? In case someday you're semi-famous and you're asked to be a chapel speaker at, at some fa fabulous Christian college, okay? So remember that, all right. <sighs> My first time on stage in front of a live audience, I was in a brownie play. I was about six years old, and I had the opening lines, and I was the only one on stage sitting on a chair in the middle right there. And the curtain came up, and I saw not as many faces, and I couldn't say a word. I was absolutely frozen. And everyone started yelling my lines at me. And it wasn't that I didn't know them. I just couldn't do it. And I just started crying, and the principal walked me off stage. So, so far, so good, but Randy, get ready, just in case you need to take me off of here. <laughs> All right. Um, so, my name is Katie, and I'm a voice actress. And I thought I would start by showing you guys a, a two-minute montage containing some excerpts of my work. And what I'd like you to notice, and some of your teachers might want you to notice, is the variety of challenges and opportunities that voice acting provides. There's speaking roles, singing roles, comedy drama, cartoon, background narration, live action dubbing. And just, I want you to know that every voice you hear is me, except for Mr. Mallard, who is Darkwing Duck. Otherwise, they're all me. So let's do that while I read. Blood when I walk by I'm not too good at telling jokes In fact, I'm kind of shy <gasps> Mama! Daddy! Mama! Daddy! Who's here? Did I go my bed? Rickles here! Nice shot, Hunker. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Oh, la la! I had no idea boys in America were so cute! You! What a sweet face you have! I... I do? Come, Rishi, show me around, oui? Uh, well, okay. Oui, I guess. I must be the luckiest girl in all of America. You see that? Richie's letting her hog all his attention! I'm hungry. And now here's Sunny Gummy, wearing the latest in modern medieval rain gear. My turn. 
tummy hurts. Now it's your turn to sing along, boys and girls. Ready, set, sing! <laughs> Valley? We had a cow. While she lived, we ate from her mother, father, and I, and her son, the calf. And everybody had enough. Okay. So. Thank you, thank you. I made this PowerPoint slide. Okay, um, actually, you know what? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you a little more about that. Okay, so, like Connie, I grew up in Los Angeles, and like Connie, my parents were divorced, but I was only three when it happened. But t to confess something to you guys, I never confessed to anybody. I really always wanted to be an actor, but since I grew up in Los Angeles, and like everybody in Los Angeles says they want to be an actor, I thought, I'm not going to say I want to be an actor, because I knew my chances were really small. So I decided, I'll probably when I grow up, I'll be a teacher or an executive secretary, because I heard that executive secretaries made a lot of money, and I like to type, and I also like office machines. So I thought that's what <laughs> I would do. However, I was telling Pastor Randy, I was the AV monitor in high school. And you don't know what that is because teachers have equipment now in their classrooms. But back in the day, we had movies, 16 millimeter, millimeter films. We, so if a teacher wanted to show a movie, you had to have the, the AV monitor come and thread the projector and do that. So I got to do that. And then we had a video machine. That was cool. I got to do that. So I did have a, an inclination. My first job with a microphone was in a department type store. My first job, I had a microphone and I had to it was in the customer service department. So when people would call, we had to page the departments. And I got fired after a few weeks because the manager didn't like hearing my voice going through the store. Someday, probably a commercial I did was over there, but he didn't know. And then um, when I did go to college in broadcasting, I had a television and radio announcing teacher. And one semester, he was the head of the department. And I had him for, I'm trying to figure out the clock. Wait a second. When do I need to stop? <laughs> 10.40. Okay. So I had him for two classes one semester, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. In the morning, I was able to interact with him. In the afternoon, he wouldn't, let, he wouldn't call on me. I'd raise my hand. He wouldn't call on me because he said by the afternoon, my voice was too whiny, and he didn't want to hear me talk. And besides that, if I was going to ever amount to anything in announcing, I was going to have to learn to change my voice. So that's kind of how I started out. So is there anybody out there like me whose report card said good student but talks too much? <laughs> oh, the other old members of the Adventures in Odyssey <laughs> fan club. All right, so these are our future voice actors down here. Or ADHD which mean, does not mean I'm not paying attention. It means I'm paying attention to a lot of things all at the same time. So just, that's how I focus, all right? All right, so I had no problem chatting with my neighbor, or myself for that matter. Um, and <clears throat> I was the one in class who used to make strange noises, you know? Just like during tests, you want me to demonstrate? All right, so that was one of my tricks. Um, <sighs> my daughter once asked me, Mom, do you have to talk all the time? I said, um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> but actually, well, OK, <laughs> um, most of our character defects are really our character assets just taken to an extreme. So don't beat yourself up if you've got one of these defects. Just look to see how you can control it and use it to your advantage. 
One of the guys I work with, he says when he was a kid, he had all these voices in his head, but when he grew up, he got them all jobs. <laughs> so <clears throat> anyway, so creating characters has always come pretty natural to me. I loved watching cartoons when I was young and listening to all that. My had a real good ear for that. Comedians, I mean, before I was saved, female, you know, comedic actresses were my role models. I love linguistics and tongue twisters and learning other languages. I even learned sign language because, God forbid, I should find myself in a situation where I couldn't talk to somebody, you know. <laughs> um, and, but I never, <laughs> I never really felt comfortable on stage because I didn't really like calling attention to myself unless I could get away with it without being caught. Um, anyway, however, um, during a, a holiday break when I was in college, my f one of my first or second year, I was working for my uncle, and he had a client who was a newscaster, and the newscaster heard my voice, I was about 18, and he said, you know, you have an interesting voice for radio, and he gave me the name and number of a, a radio ad producer in Hollywood, and he told me to call him, and I called the guy, and he in actually invited me over, and he called me in to record something. And that was a real divine appointment because you just don't, um, I didn't have any idea that I could really do some kind of work that involved acting. But I had to go back to college, so I did. And after my first two years of college, I still didn't know what I wanted my major to be. So I did what most people do. I dropped out of college, bought a guitar, ran away from home, and moved to San Francisco. And uh, <laughs> I got a job doing data entry, because that's what I was trained for. But on a whim, I took an improvisational acting workshop, because I thought maybe that will help me feel more comfortable in uncomfortable situations. And it turned out that I really liked that. It was fun and challenging, and, and I found that I could be on stage. And what I liked about it was I didn't have to memorize anything. I didn't have to put on makeup, and I didn't have to wear certain clothes, you know. I didn't have costumes. I liked that very much. It turns out, once I got into voiceover, a lot of voiceover actors are improvisational actors. Because we, do, we don't know. We walk in the studio, they hand you your script, and they go, here you go, and you're going to be this one guy, this guy, this guy. you got to be ready to go. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm in San Francisco, I'm working, and I thought, maybe I'll still look into that voiceover thing <clears throat> and uh, see if I can make some extra money. And I managed to get an agent with a demo that I had made after, like, one voiceover class, which is pretty amazing. And when I was at one of those auditions, I learned from the person interviewing me because I started interviewing her, that you could actually get a degree in broadcasting. I was like, oh, yes, something that interests me. I'll do that. Yay. So I went back to college at San Francisco State, like Liz said, and I, I got my degree five years after I started. So this is a, uh, let's see, so where am I now? Okay, so while I'm at State, this is really cool like you guys, they had guest speakers come in in our broadcasting department. And one of the guest speakers was this pioneer radio producer guy who came to talk to us. And it was Chuck Bloor, the guy who I had worked for when I was 18. So it was like one of those moments where you think, OK, I'm definitely going down the right path. Um, and then when I graduated, I realized after I was studying broadcasting, I really thought I wanted to be an engineer. And I thought, no, I, after I was done, I thought, I can't sit in a room with no windows for eight hours a day doing engineering. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to move back to Los Angeles because everybody told me, you have a good voice, but it's really better for animation. And that's where they do the animation is in LA. So you're going to have to move down there. and. Um, I didn't want to, but I did. And within the, um, two years, I had booked my first animated series, and I was able to quit my day job. And um, I, I, I want to show you something. I had this vision, and this is my, oh, well, let's see, maybe I can do it. I have to turn this on. This is my PowerPoint. Can you put up my life? 
Do you guys do that? <laughs> Up there? Can you click on that? I don't know. Is that, do I, do I need to, up oh, there, okay, cool. All right, I know, okay, this is just bear with me, because um, I had an idea one day that, and you can, let me see if I can do this. Doot, doot, oh, there we go, come on. All right, I had an idea of how I could graph how my life, how we find out what we want to do in life, and it goes like this. First, we have our desires and our interests and our talents, which is basically who we are. That's who we are. And then we have, ooh, <laughs> what we do. We get out of our education, our skills, and our experiences in life. For me, that's what happened. And then that's another path. And see, that one's a little bit wider. Who we are is always kind of the same. And what we do is another path that we take. But where those two things intersect, sometimes what we do and who we are intersect, and then we get this. <laughs> Aha! That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Yay! There's supposed to be applause in the circle. It didn't come up. But <laughs> But I, I realize that we don't get this other arrow, the what we do without need. Because if I didn't have a need to get a job, if I didn't have a, a need to, you know, do certain things, to get out of my house or whatever, I wouldn't be on that road. And it's, you know, you have to have those intersections. So don't look at needs in your life as like something bad. They're really opportunities or catalysts for something to happen, and that'll bring you, you know, like Esther, you know, Queen Esther. She was like, oh, yeah, I was born for a time such as this, right? She was in the right place at the right time. So I believe that God created each of us for a purpose, and he will show us eventually what it is we're supposed to do. Of course, when I got cast in that animated show, I called up Dr. Hyde, my professor, San Francisco State, just to let him know I was gainfully employed. And you know what he did? Oh, no, we're in the wrong slide. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay. He actually added um, a paragraph, two paragraphs in his textbook for the fifth edition with a picture of me and added a chat, a little paragraph, employing characterization. So found a place for me in his announcing paradigm. And I was very sweet about that. Okay, so let me get quicker here. So now let's talk about, oh, let's make that go away. Let's, we'll go back to, all right, let's leave that. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, so I was raised an Episcopalian, and uh, Episcopalians are the ones who sing all the verses of the hymns, okay? And I learned about Jesus, and I knew he had the right ideas, but, you know, that was about it. And eventually in my mid-20s, I went to... Uh, a Bible-believing evangelic church where I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. And of course, at that point, the focus of my life changed, and I wanted to serve God and honor Him with my life. And I was a working actress, you know, on lots of cartoons at the time. And I questioned whether or not I should continue working in Hollywood. Because at that time, the evangelical community was not too happy about children's programming. So I felt like, oh, my... Hollywood peers are going to judge me for being a Christian, and my Christian friends are going to judge me for being an actress. I was really self-conscious, and I struggled with what the Lord would have me do because I wanted nothing more than to go to heaven and hear God say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. So after I got saved, I just prayed that God would use me somehow for his glory. And sure enough, the drama ministry at our big church had auditions. And I was like, well, okay, I'm an actress. They're having auditions. You know what? I'm going to be a part of this little drama ministry. So I auditioned, and it was an improvisation audition, and I was amazing. And um, <laughs> they, you know, I knew they were so lucky to have me there. And I was waiting for them to call. Okay, finally, I'm going to be able to serve God somehow. And they called me up, and they said, um, well, you know, you were great. We loved your audition, but we prayed about it, and we think that you haven't been a Christian quite long enough to join us. 
I was like, what? Are you kidding? <laughs> All right. But that was a very humbling experience for me. I hope I didn't blow you guys out up there in the <laughs> recording booth. Um, it was very humbling. And so I thought, all right, God, I'm just going to wait for you. And so I prayed about it, and I, I checked my attitude, allowed God to grow me a little bit more. And I made some conscientious choices about what kind of work I would do and what I wouldn't do as far as voiceover goes. And then one day I was driving somewhere, I won't tell you, and that um, I was listening to Focus on the Family, and one of their family portraits came on the radio, and that was their original idea for Adventures in Odyssey. And I heard it, and I went, oh my goodness, I know these actors who are on that show. They're using professionals. I happened to be, I happened to be at the same town where Focus on the Family was located at the time. So I drove over there, I knocked on the door, I gave them my demo, I told them I was a voice actress, and I'd really like to work with them, and they're like, okay. But they said, you know what, we've, we've, we already finished doing all the family portraits. But they called me in a few times. I read their magazine on tape for the visually impaired, and that's how I got to know those people. And um, anyway, after uh, about a year or so, they said, you know what, Katie, we're working on a new show, and we're writing a part for you. And I said, great. And they said, we're going to record in the summer. And I was like, great, because I'm pregnant, and I'm going to have a baby in October. And July came, August, July, August, September, no call. Finally, October, the phone rings. Katie, can you come in this week? We, we're ready to record that show. And I said, no, I just had a baby like three days ago. <laughs> I can't come in. And I actually heard myself say, I felt like eyes, no, Abraham offering Isaac on the altar. I said, you know what? You're going to have to get somebody else. Can't come in. And they, were, they said, okay, all right. Get Phil, you know, feel better, happy baby. And we hung up the phone. <laughs> and then about six weeks later, they, Steve Harris calls me back. He says, can you come in now? And I, oh, what could I say? Oh, I, except for, well, can I bring my baby? And they said, I'm, I heard the sigh. Sure, well, this is Focus on the Family. Bring the baby. <laughs> so here I am dragging my kid in his infant seat into the first, you know, Connie Comes to Town episode. And those guys have been putting up with my craziness ever since, let me tell you. The moral of the story is if your intention is to please God, just wait. He will use you in his good time. His timing is better than ours. And if you say no to God, he'll wait for you until you're ready. And that's in the Bible because God will use anybody he wants to. He'll figure out a way. So it's been 25 years, almost, well, yeah, since we started Odyssey, 25 years. And I feel so blessed to be a part of the ministry and to be able to talk to people like you. Um, amazing. Um, let's see. Where am I? Yeah, and being Connie's great. I don't really have to memorize any lines, and I just get to be myself. And that's pretty, pretty wonderful. So I truly believe that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw what I was going to write about, but the songs you sang, the verses you read are all like what I'm about today. Um, and actually, there's a lot of similarities between voice acting and living the Christian life. And I have a video I'm going to show you real quick, show you what I mean. Everything starts with the director. The director has a lot of different jobs in the studio. One thing that's very important, especially when you're establishing new characters, is to figure out how they're going to sound. These actors have a lot of different voices, so you want to get just the right voice for the character. Well, 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 another guest. How delightful. Oh, my, my. Well, 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 another guest. How delightful. Oh, my, my, my. Well, well, another guest. How delightful. Oh, my, my. The role of the director in the studio really is to sort of manage the studio time, to, to, to work with the actors, to help them to draw out the best performances. You know, the actors that we work with are great, 
and really come prepared for the uh, for the session. But they don't know the script as well as the director does, who's kind of poured through it and gone through all of the drafts and whatnot. And he knows exactly what we need, both from a performance perspective and from a sound design perspective. Oops, my bad. Oh, and again. Oh, and there's another one. Little Miss Butterfingers, that's me. <laughs> and here goes another one. And another. There. Are you happy? Had enough? Now how about those orders? Are you ready for me to fix them? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. All right, good. A little rough, but, but it's good. <laughs> so basically, I know my time's running out. My point is that... <laughs> I think that our Christian lives, a good Christian life is like a well-produced Adventures in Odyssey episode. Because everything in my life starts with a director, just like the episode. Everything will come out well if I believe and trust the director. Who's the director? God. God, right? Okay, don't all yell out at once. All right, go back. To, no, I'm just kidding. You don't know what I'm going to say. But God wrote the script, right? And he sent the Holy Spirit to be our director. So we have to get in tune with what the director is telling us to do and just trust that, they, that God knows what's going to happen. He knows where he wants us to be, all right? And he's going to tell us where, what we're supposed to do. And that's all I have to worry about. Sometimes... That director, the Holy Spirit, will make us do things over and over again until we get it right, too, just like in the, in the studio. So anyway, we, Bible says we make plans, but God directs our steps, right? So that's my question to you. Are you listening to your director? All right, being a Christian didn't cause everything in my life to be wonderful. I've had great things happen and horrible things happen. I lost a marriage, a house. I lost both my parents to death within two weeks of each other. I raised three kids, two with special needs, practically by myself. That wasn't easy, but all those things, I think, led me to a deeper knowledge and understanding of God and of life. And really, I'm a much better actress because I'm more in touch with what it means to live through things. So I've learned to keep my eyes on Jesus. It's here in the script, and we sang it, right? Just like Peter did, so I don't sink. People and places may disappoint us, but God never does. So real quick, um, let's see. I had a job on Friday, and I didn't remember it. When I showed up, they said, oh, you auditioned for this two years ago. Really? Which reminds me, you know, we don't know. We don't always see the fruit of what we do immediately. But it might be out there growing somewhere. And my kids asked me, Mom, if you're so famous, why aren't we rich? <clears throat> okay, well, Osama bin Laden's famous. No, he is rich. How about Jack the Ripper? It doesn't matter, right? Okay. <laughs> Being famous isn't what it's all about, okay? I know I've been fortunate to be a part of something really wonderful that blesses a lot of people. But it's not, that isn't success, all right? I, that blesses me. I think the real question is, am I successful? Am I successful in obeying the Holy Spirit? Am I su successful in moving when he tells me to, you know? What matters to me, success means, what am I doing right now? Uh, Billy Shoemaker, who's a jockey, he said, when you're riding, only the race which you're riding in is important. And to me, that means that I'm successful one day at a time. And I try to stay in the moment, just like when I'm acting. And Some people, especially my kids, they think I'm really silly and not serious enough because they don't understand how I think everything is funny. But I couldn't have gone through those things in my life without reminding myself that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I don't care if people think I'm, you know, whatever makes, can lift my spirits in a bad situation is okay. Because that joy comes from God. And he's carrying me through things. And I don't want to be weak. So God's mercies are new every morning. And we all get a chance to star in a new episode of our own lives every day, right? So just listen to your director. Don't worry about how the story ends. I never read the ending. I don't know why you have to worry about it. Um, 
And trust in the Lord with all your heart, right? Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths, right? So thanks for inviting me to share with you, and I look forward to meeting some of you downstairs later. Thank you. Awesome. Did they move? <laughs> My kids went to oh. Lutheran school. We could, we could, oh, Drew. <laughs> they were mooing. All right. Okay, that's fine. Move. My kids went to Lutheran school, and we couldn't, we couldn't clap in chapel. We had to do a chapel cheer, which was silent. So this is really awesome. <laughs> First time up here, obviously. <laughs> hey guys, several quick announcements this morning. Katie Lee will be at, have a resource table downstairs immediately after chapel uh, where she'll be signing autographs and selling Odyssey CDs. There will be a sign-up list if you want to be on her email list. She'll be in the student union this afternoon from 2.30 to 3.30 if you want to talk uh, to her. Um, and tonight, starting at 6.30, we're going to have a big nostalgic Odyssey party in the union for anybody who wants to swing by. Tomorrow, she'll teach a class on audio performance at 11.00 and Rep 101, and then she'll critique students in a mock audition from 12.30 to 2. There's a lot going on. Uh, check your emails for more information on that. Get plugged into any of these programs if you want to interact with Katie while she's here. All right, that's all I have. Uh, let's just close with a prayer this morning. I think we've all had a lot of fun. Dear Father, we thank you for an opportunity to be taught and inspired this morning by a woman who heeds your call and uses her skill set for your kingdom purposes. On behalf of anyone in this room who's been touched by Katie's ministry over the years, we just say thank you, Lord, for the work you're directing through Christian media, but more importantly, through Christians. Father, as we leave this place, just embolden us. Draw us into the unique ministries and vocations that you've designed with us in mind. We're not all voice actors, but each of us is a voice. And so I pray that even in our diversity of gifts and callings, that you'd help us to live in the harmony you talk about in Romans 15, that as one voice, we'd give praise and glory to you, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of this unity that we have, we want to bear one another's burdens, Lord, and uh, we just want to pray for Leighton Lake, whose family home burned down last night in Muncie. Help him as he assists his parents with all the details in the wake of this tragedy, and may the entire Lake family find their consolation and comfort in you. God, just, I pray that you would be enough. Let you, just let that be the, the desire of our hearts, trusting that all else will be added and shaken together. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. Have a great day.